I am a 46 year old woman. I am single just over a year now um, out of a 20 something year marriage, 30 something year long relationship. All right. So this is interesting. So you are coming up to your year anniversary of yes. this lifestyle and you must have some reflection on what you thought it would be and what it has been. And why don't you give us that comparison? I thought I would go in and I would just feel so self-conscious about myself and I wouldn't be able to connect with anybody. Um, you know, I, I'm a 46 year old woman. I've had two C-sections. I have a bit of a floppy belly. Um, I never, you know, I've got big boobs, but I never thought of them as nice. I used to think I had a nice ass, but not so much anymore. I thought I'd be going in and seeing all these beautiful people and this and that, and just be intimidated. Um, but what I walked into, especially at Oasis is just an environment of love and acceptance and just so many different types of people and body types and representations of who they want to be. And I have never felt more beautiful or accepted in my life. I've never been told how beautiful I am in like the 30 years that I was with that man. You know, I've never had somebody go, oh, look at those boobs. How come you've been hiding them all this time? Like just the self-confidence from that, but it's not just about the physical confidence because it ends up boosting your mental confidence as well, right? Like sometimes what people see on the outside um, can be reflected on what you feel on the inside because when you start to feel that kind of, you know, like I am beautiful. And I also get, you know, that like just my energy is beautiful. And so just feeling that from people, like the energy all around me is what brings out the beauty, right? Yeah. So my expectations were kind of, I'd feel like, Meh, and I wouldn't get any attention and I wouldn't meet anybody and I wouldn't talk to anybody. It's opened up a world of friendships and playmates and um, experiences that I haven't had before. Um, gotten to explore more of my kinks and find out what I like, what I don't like. And yeah, it's been fun. It's funny. The, the lifestyle, you didn't mention a lot of sex in that. And it's funny because this lifestyle, people think you walk in and it's a bunch of orgies. And it's not really. I mean, no. you walk in at M the Club M4 at like, you know, 1 a.m. Yeah, it might be a bunch of fucking orgies back there. But it's really not. So I hope that people take some inspiration from that, that this lifestyle could be more about you coming home to yourself, you yeah. falling in love with yourself, and the rest will just follow. So Yeah. I was able to get my first impact play. So accumulated my first set of bum makeup, as I call it, right? Um, bum, makeup. <laughs> <laughs> bum makeup, uh, because it's, it's, yeah, it's makeup and I enjoy wearing it. Um, so I've been able to kind of explore things like that. I've been able to gain the confidence to be like, you know, in the pool, just kind of make eyes with that guy and be like, you know what? yeah, let's go upstairs and play like where I wouldn't necessarily wouldn't have done that before. Um, so having that, like just those exciting moments of, of small pleasures um, with people that you wouldn't necessarily expect to have pleasures from and just having the marks after, I don't know. And that feeling after brings back the memories, like sitting down the next day and being like, oh, right. Or like looking in the mirror and being like, yeah, that's going to bruise a little, a little faster now uh, or a little deeper, like tomorrow. I know I'll see it more. He's become a regular play partner, but I've also enjoyed the fact that I can have him as a play partner and he plays differently than another play partner that I've recently met. So yeah. this play partner that I recently met enjoys being a dom. So I have some nice, a nice dom to explore new things with. Then I have the other guy who's not necessarily a dom, but a lot more sensual. And it's like, okay, I can have you tonight and then I can have you tomorrow night. And then I can have you the next night. And then if I happen to be at the club and see you, I can have you too. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And it's lovely because I've always kind of been a slut and I've always been called out for being a slut. And I've always said, I enjoy being a slut and now I can really just own it. And nobody judges yeah. me for it. You are friends with Pearly Vixen and you had listened to her podcast about, yeah. you know, the gangbang that I had or orgy that I had helped run for her. Yes. And you gave me some great feedback and some great insights. And what, what was it that you felt after listening to that? Uh, I kind of felt like, oh, you know what? Maybe it is something that I could do. Um, it is one of, our, one of my fantasies um, to have like whatever, five, seven guys um, all around. I really like the idea of the um, blindfold okay. because I think that would really... 
because I am, I am visual and just like, I was like, you know what? I never thought about it like that. Like put on a blindfold, kind of submit to, I'm a sub, but I'm not used to submitting to having all that pleasure on me and giving pleasure, receiving pleasure and having it run by somebody that's trusted. So it kind of made me give pause and go, Hmm, maybe that is something that I can explore one day with unicorns help. <laughs> and isn't that wonderful that her sharing her story can create an opening of opportunity and possibility in the minds of listeners that think, well, wait a second, if I could have a safe experience and it was designed for my fantasy, what would I want? And right? so yeah. encourage everyone who's listening to think about what it is that you would want if you had to run a unicorn and run one of your ideal fantasy scenes and you could have anything you want. And I love yeah. that you had said to me that listening to the podcast inspired your own ideas, because that is the whole point of what we're doing here. We're sharing our experiences. We're, we're vulnerably oversharing our lives so that people can feel a sense of uh, maybe that they could find themselves in this lifestyle, or maybe we're more relatable after we've, we've shown this. And so yeah. it's, uh, it's good. And I hope that your interview inspires people too, because there might be people who think, oh, I've got flabby skin and two, you know, two C-sections I'm never going to fit in. Well, maybe you just saying that specific sentence might let them feel like they can. So sometimes you don't know what it is that you're doing that can inspire people, but I promise you it will. I have seen this, this, uh, this podcast change people's lives and you're no exception. So thank you for sharing your story. You can listen to the full interview with Peekaboo on my sex and swinging with trying unicorn podcast. It is 55 minutes and worth every second.